Okay. Um, can I say good afternoon, right? Yeah. Your mom wants to feel my vibration. So he wants me closer so that I can hit him with my hands. <laughs> Well, it is an important occasion for us, particularly in our journey of life, to come to Christ Church. Uh, the name resonates with me quite strongly. I was wondering, how did they get about a name like that? Is that a church? That is Christ Church? Or it's a city? As a small church. Later, I realized it's a whole community of people named Christ Church. So, well, I'm so excited to be here. Excited in the sense that um, um, it is our desire always to share peace and to call for genuine forgiveness and reconciliation wherever we go on earth. And we believe that if there is no reconciliation and forgiveness, we cannot break the cycle of violence. And that's how to heal, and to heal for a long time, is to let go the pains to someone that can handle it. Transferring it to the divine is always the way out of healing. However, what you saw here um, is uh, a story of a filmmaker uh, that started in Switzerland. Um, sometimes because I confuse New Zealand and Switzerland. <laughs> so, um, in, the, in the mountain uh, palace called Ko, where members of the Initiative Exchange meet regularly, annually, to discuss global issues and how they can help the world. And then, 60 something year old man, um, David Chana. Uh, was following us with camera and we were wondering what is this man doing with a camera not taking our images but picking our legs as we were walking he had his camera in his hand bending as a gold man but just filming our legs so what will he do with that what kind of feeling is this and later he came at tea and said gentlemen i feel i need to tell you a story in the film and the man quickly said, look, no, we are not actors. We don't like anything told of us. No, he says, for a peaceful cause. When the man had the word peaceful cause, he smiled. I said, well, we can do anything for peace, so go ahead. And that's how this film started. Um, we did not know uh, that they were going to interview us separately and then some of the things I said on, about my past. <laughs> I said, why did this guy really make me open my mind and now he's telling people that I used to wink at ladies in the church before. <laughs> I, I didn't know he was going to put that. But then, <laughs> we were all interviewed separately and this is uh, about 58, 59 hours of uh, footages uh, compressed into Tighten nine minutes, and now you just saw the 20 minutes version. So, ladies and gentlemen, brothers in faith and in unity, peace must prevail on earth. And it has to start with us. We're excited to say a little thing we started in an obscure place in Nigeria has taken global uh, stage, and this film has been translated into uh, 26 languages. It's been uh, used in schools. And we're humbled by the way it brings change and reconciliation among people. Like in South Sudan, before the unity, before the separation, it was shown in Khartoum. Khartoum. And then the families, people who were not talking before, started talking. And in Nigeria, Boko Haram region. I was written by those people who have stolen identity to kill in the name of religion. It was also screened. And after the screening, people who say we will not accept 
former, but we are now repentant, said, if this can happen to this gentleman, then we are happy to receive the former fighters into our midst. It's a gradual process. It's the end of fruit. But we are glad that this has happened to our country. In some regions, we still have our violence. And we want to say, in where we work, most of the cities we work, peace has been restored. So thank you for uh, listening. We'll be happy to entertain questions after my senior brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sometimes I call him my father. A big, a, big, a, big joke before, a big joke before I give him the microphone. One day we were traveling, and so we got, a, got to a gasoline station, the petrol station. And I used to buy petrol there. And this time I was traveling with him. We don't, well, this time we were going together because we need to be in one car. And. The petrol, there was one guy that moves around the petrol station. And he came to me and said, Pastor, are you today in your car with your father? I said, yes. <laughs> and the man looked at me and said, this guy cannot see clearly. <laughs> Thank you very much, dear brothers and sisters. I greet you with the greeting of peace by saying, Assalamu alaikum. It simply means, may the peace of the Almighty be with you. Distinguished brothers and sisters, our story, our journey of life, perhaps may resonate in one way with what is happening here. And it may resonate with individual level, but and may not resonate with what is happening or what you are going through as a nation and as a community within this nation. But perhaps at individual level, you will find something out of our own foolishness so that you will not fall into the pits that we pass through. The pit we pass through that caused the death of him or our loved ones. That make him an amputee. How do you protect yourself and your community from falling to that trap? For me, coming to Christ Church. As my colleagues have said, it's like, what is happening here? And seeing the event that happened, both the natural disaster in 2010, 2011, and the man-made disaster of March 15. These are phenomena that we saw the occur in some countries. But instead of transforming it, they transfer the aggression, they transfer the pains, they move into vengeance. They move into eight higher level of eight. So much eight that they end up causing more self-destruction to the economy and dignity of those nations. There are many examples you know better across the world. So in the moment when the whole world was going through a very troubled, traumatic situation, where religion is becoming a force for evil instead of a force for good. Where the human family are deep, happy, excluding, building walls across their communities instead of bridges across the communities. When the political actors hijack opportunities to create more hate instead of love in their community. New Zealand and the political actors of New Zealand and the people of Christchurch will take a new shift, a paradigm shift from those negative way of reacting to issues. And for us, you are our model across the world. Many of us pray with you at that moment and we wish how I wish my nation is just like Christchurch where solidarity will happen, we have solidarity with those who are suffering, with those who are persecuted, as a lot of an action. He may be sincere to have a fear, but sincerely ignorant or how to handle the fear. Sincerely ignorant or handle the fear of unknown. 
we all live in fear of the other because we, 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 we couldn't decode that neighbor or the action or the attitude and behavior of our neighbor especially if you come from other faiths from other culture from other ethnic nationality and from other colors of the skin we find an excuse to hold on to that that's why for me Christ Church you are a model we want to thank you very much for what you've gone through for the courage of the dignity you expose the dignity of the human person in the most trying moments of our journey of life. Distinguished brothers and sisters, coming here, we come to learn from you. And we have so much to learn from you, to share with our brothers across the world. As my friend said, we have a network in almost over 70 countries around the world where we are either invited to talk or our messages have been used, or is being used in terms of how can religion be a force of good. In Christ Church, I saw it clearly. This city, just the name Christ Church, I was reflecting. For us people of faith, either we are the most religious continent in the world, Nigeria happened to be one of them. My country, 200 million people. You can't move a kilometer without finding a church and a mosque or a sanctuary about gods or goddess in one corner or the other of the whole city. We are one of the most religious, the ten most religious countries if we go into Indus, but at the same time, the most corrupt nation in the world. What is the disconnection between our religiosity and our godliness? The single brothers and sisters. I'm trying to say that we have shared values what bind us together as people. For example, with the children of Abraham, we have Jerusalem. Jerusalem bind us together. For every Jew, is a motherland for the Jews. For every Christian, is a symbol, is a city, is the heavenly city of Acts, the Jerusalem. And for every Christian is a third holy sanctuary. For every Muslim is a third holy sanctuary. The direction of the first kibla, where we face on what to commit with God. However, the children of Abraham <coughs> find it difficult to connect, even within the same city. If you, instead of being a unifying factor, they become a tool for divisiveness. And you see, if you compare that with the passion we all have for Jerusalem, I remember when I went to school, and there used to be this uh, hand from the Methodist, the Methodist School of Baptist School, when this symbolizes Jerusalem. I think I can remember to sing this song. Can I sing it? Let me remember, maybe I can sing it. Maybe somebody can follow me. It says, and those in schools you have to do that, because the missionary school. This is Jerusalem on high, my father's city is, my city when I die, I may at all be Oh, happy place, when shall I be, my Lord, with thee to see thy face. So every Christian, his the greatest aspiration is Jerusalem. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jerusalem doesn't have the name God or church or temple attached to it. I think the whole world, the city that has the name church attached to as a city, is here, Christ Church. So it said for people of faith, it symbolizes a very important phenomenon, the name Christ Church. When their brothers come in search of treasury and meet their brothers here, they think one of the best things is what name can we give this city? Let's call it Christ Church. And they build a church in the center of the city. Am I right? Yeah, right. A church in the center of the city. It become a turning point for relations for everybody. And it means they have God in them in whatever form, how they connect to Him. I see the name of the city as a unifying factor, whether you're a Muslim, Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, 
Hindu, Shinto, Confucian, <coughs> Zoroastrian, or even a Badaya, whatever your traditions, this city symbolizes spirituality by the name. Either you are spiritual or not, you symbolize spirituality. So how, and that's why, perhaps for me, God has a purpose for making you to live in this city, for making natural disaster to happen, and man-made disaster to occur, and for your reaction to cheat the world a new message. I believe we have a lot to learn. That's why you have so much to give the world. And we are here to congratulate you for you having the courage to give so much. Because today the whole world is expecting from you. You have set a standard that the whole world, if the world emulates your prime minister, if the world emulates your prime minister, some of the wars going across the world wouldn't have happened. Ongoing wars wouldn't have happened. If the world emulates as a community, emulates the people of Christ Church. What you do, the solidarity you give, perhaps the whole world will have to this. And it's not new. What you did is a tradition from our religious institutions. For us as Muslims, we are taught whenever a calamity or disaster occurs to your neighbor, you give your lifeline in support. It. And who did this? Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad as our symbol, our role model for Muslims. When the Roman Empire, the Roman, the papacy of Rome, fall to the Byzantium from Persia, for it to take it over, what happened? The prophet sent a message of solidarity to the papacy of Rome in the seventh century, and he prayed that the God bring victory back to the Roman, so that our Christian brethren will take over back their land. They will take over their dignity. A whole chapter is dedicated to that in the Quran. Either you are an Orthodox Muslim, you are a conservative Muslim, you are a traditionalist Muslim, you are a reformist Muslim or a Puritan. Nobody denied that Quran, the Quran has a chapter Rome. The chapter is called Roman. In the Quran, they take our solidarity with our brothers. So it is your tradition. And for Christians, we know what Jesus has done. The modern he gave with the Good Samaritan. As a mother to say, even if you don't know it, he has a problem, you have to be there for him. We saw that mother in Christianity. Buddhists will have what to tell you, etc., etc. But what is important for me is that how can we sustain this temple, this gift that has come from you? How do you sustain it? The burden lies more on the interfaith community. Because in your tradition, the culture of loving your brother as you love yourself, loving your neighbor as you love yourself, is a key culture that goes across our faith tradition across the world. How can we catch on this opportunity to be the best that the world can come and learn? How do we become the instrument of peace so that where there is hate across the world, instead of us coming, you move there to transfer love. Where there is anger, and hatred, you would have to transfer forgiveness. Where there is vengeance, you transfer forgiveness there. And where there is sadness, you move there to bring joy. These are the key important things I want to see. However, we will be very happy, as my colleagues have said, ask us any question. How are we able? Because the road is wrong. When you do this, some people will feel you are selling out. You are too much compromising. Or if you are not compromising, you are betraying the values of our identity. Why are you messing up? Why are you from easily yoking with unbelievers? So many things will come your path. So let's see how we will do this. I would love to hear from you. Ask us any questions about our journey building interpersonal relationships, intra-community relationships, and community of faith. How we are able to work with it? Because the world is coming to ask you, how are you able to do it? How can you do it better? Thank you very much.